Well, we're just about done. Amen. Um, just a, a few things that I want to say uh, in some closing remarks here. First of all, um, I got a ton of thank yous, so I'll, I'll try and boil those down here. First of all, I want to thank the teams and the committees um, that brought everything together and, and actually made the presentations. Uh, but I also uh, want to thank them for something else. You know, we, we've been working really hard back in Austin to make sure the publications are ready um, when the conference occurs. The conference actually occurred a week or so, maybe two weeks even earlier uh, than it typically does, and the teams really stepped it up this year. But in addition to the team stepping it up, the PRB, the, pro the, the Product Review Board, really stepped it up and put forth a huge amount of effort. A and so, but in addition to that, the staff, particularly Jackie Thomas and Michael Burns, who work on the editing and the, the layout and stuff of the publications, have, have really been stellar this year. So I want to give them a little shout out and say thank you uh, for that. Um, yeah, thanks. I, I do, I do want to say thank you to the staff. I've, I've been the director now seven years. My first conference was 2007, and I'm learning more and more to get out of the way. So, <laughs> So when they come back and say, we're going to have our mixer in a stadium, and we're going to air condition it, and we'll, we're going to buy footballs, and we're not going to make people sign releases for hamstrings and knees and stuff like that, it's like, we're not? Uh, but anyway, um, uh, I, I just want to say thanks to the staff. The first ones arrived here uh, literally a, a week ago and, and started putting things together. and, and so. Uh, what a spectacular job I, I think the staff did this year in, in, in this venue and putting this together. Yeah. And I, I also want to thank Rex, who's, who's been uh, pretty stellar in his work in, in getting ready and in getting us through this conference. Um, so thank you, Rex. Yeah. There's a, uh, there, are, there are a couple things that I, I just, that stuck out in my mind, and, and so I want to mention some of those things. Uh, first of all, the golf tournament. Who is a winner of the golf tournament? Yeah, I know. Look, it, I know it hurts, but that's the way it is. Um, uh, Mitch Daniels uh, was, was talking about higher education challenges, and he said, uh, everybody that gets a point, what are we going to do with everybody that gets a three point something? And I was sitting back here saying, I'd like to get a three point something. I was trying to remember what my college grades were and I thought, good thing I didn't go to Purdue. Um, I also, th the young people that were up here from NCCER and Skills said something like, um, gee, we either have a choice of, uh, of choosing to go to college or choosing the military. And back when I was their age, that was exactly our choice, the military or going to college. I, I didn't think about having kids back when I was that age. Maybe I, I should have done that. Um, anyway, um, just a couple things that stood out in my mind that I couldn't help but, but mention. Uh, some reminders for you. First of all, the evaluations. Remember, we changed the format, so we've highlighted some presentations. We changed the format of the golf tournament, and I can't figure I'm going to win this next year, but I can still talk about it this year. Um, we changed the, the golf tournament. We changed the format of the conference. Um, so we really need your feedback uh, on that, um, on those changes, so that we can make it better or we can move it back or whatever we need to do. Um, I, I've been talking to a few people here, and a and few people, a lot of people, and, and I've heard a couple comments like, we're finally starting to see with this knowledge base thing and this 1010 thing and, and starting to see the pieces all fitting together and, and I hope you're seeing that too. Um, if you're not, then, then keep coming because I really believe that it's all going to fit together and, it, and it's going to be going to be spectacular. One of the things we do need, I think, I think uh, Sherry mentioned it when she was up here and there's some paper you might have gotten uh, in your packet about volunteers to, as we take the knowledge apart and as we re-tag it and, and then redo summaries and stuff, um, we really need your help there. So your volunteer uh, effort would be greatly appreciated. Um, 
I wanted to remind you of the what's in it for me. Oh, by the way, another reminder, I'm sorry, almost forgot the presentations and, and everything are available. So as you leave here, I, I don't know about you, but I, I'm always astounded at two days worth of content that we get and how you remember all that when you go home. I, it's easy for me because I'm, this is what I do for a living, right? But you don't, you guys go do, do, do build projects and stuff and, and so you're not looking at this knowledge that gets created all the time. But all of that's available for you on the download page. When you start to think about it, as you're going home, get back, download it, s share it with your colleagues back in your office, but, but use it. It's there for you, and we'll make it as, as easily for you to get uh, as we can. If you've got any questions, give us a call. I, I, I want to talk about the WIFM, what's in CII for me, uh, besides my paycheck. Um, you get to learn from the best of the best. So the best in academia. Look at the academics that you that you saw here. They are the best of the best in this industry throughout the world. No, no question about it. Um, you get to lead the industry. So our research agenda literally sets the agenda for this industry in the US and I, I believe around the world too. You get to understand a topic. You get to be a subject matter expert if you're participating with us. You get different and new perspectives and I don't know, I'm getting old enough, maybe I don't want any new perspective, but no, that's not true. I really, I love this place. I love to come and listen and, and talk to people and, and, and to renew, right? We come to the conference and we're so busy out there doing the things that we do that we forget that it's good to renew ourselves. I was talking to Ronnie May from DTE Energy and he's, what a great opportunity to renew ourselves, to think about what we're doing and to think about what we can do now and go back and put all of this into, into play and, and so what a great time to renew and what a great time to, co to, to craft some outcomes, to create outcomes that improve yourself and improve your company and improve the industry. Um, pretty exciting. I, I want to go back to the people, people, people thing that, that I mentioned and Dave mentioned too and every, a lot of people have been mentioning people, people, people and what's it about? And, and you know, I, I think that it was mentioned that I'm on the board for, uh, for the ACE Mentor Program. Can't guess why you've been seeing him every year for a few years, right? Because I've got a connection there. And I'm also on the board of NCCR, so I got a little connection there. I asked him to come because his people thing is so more important. And look at, look at David's presentation. Look at the, the pyramid, right? People, people, people. We're going to be competing, competing, competing for more people. And I, what are we going to do about it? Yeah, I mean, we got we got a, a growing industry. We got a we got less people that are coming into the industry, and we got to figure out how we're going to staff our work, how we're going to train our workers, how we're going to do all that. And and the reason that I, I think it's important for you to listen to NCCER and, and skills and to listen to the ACE Mentor Program is is because Char. Just as an example, Charlie Thornton wrote this book, A Life of Elegant Solutions, right? And he talks about the ACE Mentor Program in here and the creation of that. And, and I have to tell you that I've never been accused of, of elegant solutions, right? I'm a pretty face, but I'm not elegant. <laughs> no question about that. But I don't need to have elegant solutions because somebody's already crafted them. And I can participate in them. And I can be part of the solution. And that's what leaders do. They become part of the solution. They don't stay as part of the problem. That's what we do. That's what we do as leaders. So if you're not participating in ACE, if you're not participating in skills or NCCER, go do it. The solution's there for you to do it. Create your own solution. If, you, if you're good at crafting elegant solutions, please craft an elegant solution. We saw a ton of elegant solutions here to different issues uh, over the past couple days. This is just a couple when I come back to, to people, people, people that I, I want to suggest to you are ways that you can be involved, ways you can be part of the solution and not part of the problem. I, I want to show you the total recordable incident rate in a different way and this is the process control chart, right? So statistically it says that uh, between 0.13 which is the lower control limit and, and 1.03, the upper control limit, that's where we're going to be, okay? And you can see that we've been going down, and if you look, we've been, the, 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 the control limits have been following it down. 
So what I want to suggest to you is, is get out of control. Statistically, you have to get out of control to get to zero. You cannot keep doing the same things. You cannot keep doing the, the same processes you've been doing. So look at your processes. Look at the, the research we put in here on, on near misses, right? Look at the work we did on hazard recognition last year. Look at the work we did on, on leading indicators. Go put that stuff, get yourself out of your normal process and go put that stuff in because we're giving you the tools to get to zero. Absolutely giving you the tools to get to zero and you can do it. No question about it, zero is possible. This is the dart chart. I'd tell you the same, it's hard to see the lower control limit there, 0.07. But again, get yourself out of control. These are the fatalities. Um, and I, I just want to mention these. I, I mentioned something at the, at the board meeting, I think, last year in Philadelphia. But you know, I, I was working on a project when I first got out of, out of, out of uh, uh, my undergraduate work and, and uh, there was a fatality on the project and I was pretty close and I, could, I, I got the opportunity to see it all and it's a memory that I don't think about much anymore. Um, but when I do think about it, it's a pretty vivid, vivid memory. And, and uh, so it was a successful project except, right? Uh, except not only was somebody killed, but, but I have that memory. And, and I, I think, uh, so I've been having this argument with a couple people like at the National Academy and stuff. I think, I think these, these are, are issues that, that don't fit our normal safety stuff, okay? They're low frequency, high impact things. Maybe they're asteroids that come flying in and hit us, black swans, I, d I don't know what you wanna call them. But I know they, they happen, right? And, and we have, for example, we have fall protection, right? We know we should tie, be tied off and, and yet we have fatalities in fall protection um, or, or in falls. So, so I, I, I really think we gotta have two pieces here. One's our normal processes, but also a look at these low frequency, high impact events. And that takes leadership to do and so and so I wanted to give you one example of, of leadership and I should have talked to Jan first I, but I'm going to use Jan as as an industry leader who you, you may not think Jan this this little petite woman who looked at at us last night like this uh, is is an industry leader but you know engineering news record does the best of the best and and I don't know whether you, uh, lots of you have had your projects in the engineering news record best of the best and I remember when when we first did that, and I think I was a judge maybe on the first, first, uh, um, the first one or two that, that happened. And, and uh, I remember talking with Jan one day, we didn't have a specific safety criteria for the best of the best. When we, the first best of the best that came out from engineering news record was no safety criteria. So I remember as a judge, right, we got into, I got into some wonderful conversations with people you know, well, there was only three fatalities on this job. It was a great project. I went, how can you be the best of the best and kill somebody on a project? Yeah, good. Qu I thought it was a great question. It's only three people, you know. Glad I didn't work for that company. But, but I had a conversation. I saw Jan. I ran into Jan. I don't remember. Maybe it was in New York or I don't remember where it was. I said, Jan, what, a, what an impact engineering news record could have on safety if you put into the best of the best a criteria specifically for safety. Next year we had a criteria specifically for safety. And today when I judge, and I judge usually in the Texas, Louisiana region, or I, I've had the opportunity to judge the, the national best of the best one time, I don't remember what section it is, four or five, but I immediately go to the safety section and I start throwing things out, right? Because we now get 120 or 130 of these, these dossiers on projects to review, and we can get rid of a, some of them right away. We go right to the safety section and do that. Good safety, right, that engineering news record under Jan's leadership put in is now we're starting to see all that have an impact, and people are thinking about safety differently. That's what I think leadership is. That's something that changed the process and, and where you wouldn't think 
um, was a leader in our industry was in fact a leader. So if this little lady that sits up here like this can do that, you can do that too. Um, one, the one thing that, that, that I guess I would, I do remember specifically from, from President Daniels was, was his comment that um, we have a responsibility to advocate, and he was talking about energy and some other things, but I, I want to tell you, I think we have a specific responsibility to advocate for things like safety and to be the leaders, uh, to be engaged and, and to go out of here and do that because we are the leaders of this industry, right? I, I don't know if you saw Ace, uh, remember Ace's presentation, seven million plus people in this industry and look in this room because we're the leaders of those seven million people, second largest industry in this country. You can extend that to, to the world uh, pretty, pretty easily. So, um, wow. The last thing I, I simply want to, well, two more things I want to say. First of all, I, I want to tell you that it's been my privilege, as, as Rex said, to be your track steward for a couple days. And, and I want to wish you the, the opportunity uh, for a safe journey home. But, but I also want to tell you that, that I get to be your track steward, but I got to tell you that I am, I am so proud to be the director of CII and to be part of a research organization that you all direct and you all guide and you participate in and you are such a, a positive force uh, for this industry. And so I just simply want to end this by saying thank you for everything you do uh, for us, but everything you do for the industry and, and this nation and this world. So Rex, it's all yours.